Good. Good afternoon. I'm joined today at Bermuda's Vaccination Center by the Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Cole Simons, the Minister of Health, the Honorable Kim Wilson, and the Government Science Advisor, Dr. Karika Weldon. I'm pleased to be able to roll up my sleeve and get the vaccine today. The fact that Bermuda has the COVID-19 vaccine is a significant milestone in our fight against this virus, and I thank the Minister of Health and her team, along with Government House, for their efforts that enabled Bermuda to receive this vaccine this early. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that we have this vaccine. We are all acutely aware of the impact that the coronavirus has had on our island. The government of Bermuda is committed to providing the resources necessary to combat this pandemic, and the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is a valuable tool in that arsenal. We are doing this today as we feel that it is important to combat vaccine hesitancy, especially within the black community in Bermuda, that us as leaders are prepared to lead by example. After studying the research presented, we are fully confident that this vaccine is safe and effective. As well as being Premier of Bermuda, I am also a father, husband, and son. And when making decisions regarding health, I, like many of you, cannot just think about myself, but also those I love. I am taking this vaccine today because I trust the science and the numerous regulatory authorities around the world who have studied it and assured us all that it is safe. The pandemic will not stop with one person taking a vaccine. It will only come to an end when enough people have taken the vaccine to interrupt the virus's spread. To that end, I encourage all residents to research from trusted sources, to consult with their physician, and to make an informed decision regarding getting vaccinated. There are rumors and conspiracy theories spreading, but it is important to separate fact from fiction. And our job is to ensure that everyone has access to accurate information so that they can make their decisions based on facts. Thank you, Minister of Health. Good afternoon, everyone. As you can see, a significant amount of planning and hard work has been done to get this vaccine center up and running. And I would like to thank Dr. Heather Armstrong, her team, and the COVID Vaccination Program Committee for their efforts over these last several, several weeks. Today, Monday, January 11, 2021, is a memorial day for Bermuda, as this morning we administered the first doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Vaccines save lives millions of lives globally every year and have done so for over a century. In Bermuda, there has been a vaccine, a robust vaccination program in place for years and decades, in fact. And as a result, we have seen dramatic decreases in the prevalence of vaccine preventable diseases. One relevant example is that of measles. Bermuda's last recorded case of measles was over 30 years ago in 1991. Mm. The scale of this mass vaccination program for COVID is atypical. We are deploying the resources to vaccinate as many of the adult population in Bermuda as possible over the coming months. Today, as I get vaccinated, the message is simple. We want to vaccinate as many people as possible so that we can help prevent them, their loved ones, and also help this island to achieve herd immunity. According to most experts, if we are able to vaccinate between 60 and 70 percent of our population, we can halt the transmission and spread of this virus. As we've previously announced, for more information on the COVID-19 vaccination program, please visit www.gov.bm forward slash vaccines. To register your interest to be vaccinated, you can call the vaccine hotline at 444-2498 and select option two or you can send an email to the vaccinine at gov.bm, subject line, registration data, and add the following information. Now, I have to pause because we have received an enormous amount of interest um, from callers this morning uh, with respect to booking their vaccinations. Uh, our phone lines actually blew up and we have added more phone lines. We are working on the voice messaging system as well as adding more persons to help to meet that demand, which is extremely exciting. So again, if you go to vaccine at gov.bm, subject line registration data, and add the following information, name, date of birth, full address, 
phone numbers, both cell and home, email, occupation, your GP's name, your diagnosis if you're clinically vulnerable, and if you're an essential worker, the name of your employer. Please note, if you've had any other vaccine within the past month, you must wait a full 30 days from that vaccination before registering for the COVID-19 vaccination. If you have recently traveled, you must wait until your negative day 14 test results are registered in order uh, before you register for uh, the vaccination. And in addition, if you are receiving a therapy for any medical conditions, please consult with your doctor prior to registering your interest. Already we know, as I said, from the volume, the high volume of calls received this morning from the uh, vaccine hotline, there is an enormous enthusiasm in the community to get vaccinated. We are truly delighted with this level of eagerness and we implore people to be patient as we answer your calls and respond to your emails. This is a journey of months, not days, and everyone who wants to be vaccinated, as the Premier has said, will have an opportunity to be vaccinated. Thank you. Good, good morning. As we all know, we have a national health crisis and the pandemic, and the opposition stand poised to work with the people of this country and the government of this country to address this national issue. We know that if by taking this vaccine, one life has been saved, that's good enough for Bermuda. But we know from experience, from the science, that it has proven to be effective. And as a consequence, we are here today to support each other, to support the people of this country, and to lead by example. I was nervous about taking it myself, quite frankly. I've been studying this research. I've spoken to my doctor friends, doctor clients, and they've said it's safe. In fact, just yesterday, I was speaking to a doctor overseas, one of my clients at the bank, and he says, Cool, I am a professor of medicine and I recommend that you take it for the health and safety of your population. And so I'm here today under the kind invitation of the Premier to lend my support. We must support all of our people in this country, especially our vulnerable, to ensure that their health is safeguarded. And if it means making the vaccines available to them, will do just that, and the opposition will support government where and whenever in this endeavor. It's not an easy project, it's a monumental project, but steadfastly we will get there and protect the health of this country. If the people are safe, the economy is safe, and that's what's important to all of Bermuda. I'd like to also thank this center, this health center, for the hard work, for the diligence. I know it's going to be strenuous and stressful, but it's all positive, and we are here to support you to make sure that it's done effectively and that you're taken care of. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Bermuda. I am elated to be here today uh, for a few reasons. I go back to 10 years ago when I was uh, in the midst of my first RNA research project, I was an undergraduate at the University of Leicester and I was working on mRNA research. And to now be 10 years on here, ready to see an mRNA vaccine being given to my people, I'm very excited. Um, I can also go back to during my PhD when I traveled the world. I went to various places, Italy, South Africa, Poland, to conferences and heard about mRNA vaccines, and it felt like it was going to be a distant thing. But now to see it actually come to fruition is really exciting. Um, and the other reason why I'm very excited about this is because I think I probably hold the record in this country for the most nasopharyngeal swabs. I've had 20 plus, <laughs> so I'm excited that this may be the end of that for me, um, but I encourage everyone to get tested. Um, one thing I want to also mention is that this is safe. This has been researched for decades. I have met the researchers who have been working on this for decades. We had actually those from Moderna here two years ago for my RNA conference at Fairmont Southampton. 
talking about mRNA vaccines. So there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that has gone into this, and I'm here to take it because I fully believe in the science. Thank you. Are there any questions before I go ahead and get into the thing? The minister mentioned uh, the, the fact that the phones have been just mm -hmm. crazy. Um, how many, you said you had to edit additional lines, because we've heard it, that's, we've heard all day people, seniors calling saying they can't get through. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just trying to get some idea of when that's going to be fixed. You said you're putting new phones in and... Uh, uh, yes, we have... Uh, in fact, probably about two hours ago when we started receiving um, a number of concerns from uh, members of the public, we immediately have gotten on to that and we're trying to get um, resolution, resolution, excuse me, as it relates to the uh, voicemail system. We're adding more phone lines as well as more personnel. One of the advantages, I must say, though, is that in, in addition to being excited that obviously there's an uptake and people are really, really um, interested in getting the vaccine, which is incredibly important. But we also want to remind members of the public that you can um, register online. So if, as they email me, they can also email the uh, website and do the registration, and then that would uh, save them from having to wait online with respect to the calls. But by all means, it's totally a great indictment of the level of interest and enthusiasm that we're seeing in Bermuda already on day one. Minister, you also said it's going to be, this is a month long process. Uh, any idea when you feel uh, uh, confident that we'd have enough vaccine and enough of this will be rolled out that uh, we can get to that 60, 70 percent? Well, as, as, as we've indicated, the science suggests that herd immunity can be accomplished between 60 and 70 percent of uh, the population, total population being immunized. Uh, we received our first shipment, as you know, on Friday. We are anticipating receiving more from the COVAX facility, as well as the United mm -hmm. Kingdom has also indicated to us that they would provide to us the same proportion of vaccines that they receive will also be distributed to all the other OTCs. So, sorry, I was asking when, when do you think that might, when do you think, you said months, so are we talking this year? Oh, we would, the, the anticipation would be absolutely yes, that we would expect this year. As soon as we continue to get more in receipt of more vaccinations, we would certainly encourage members of the public to continue to be vaccinated so that we can reach that 60 to 7 percent herd immunity. So you, do you think by next September we will start seeing some level of normalcy? Um, I'm not in a position to say that, but what I am in a position to say is that everybody in Bermuda that's a resident of Bermuda that wants the vaccine, it will be made available to them. Hi. For those um, that have been eligible and offered the vaccine so far, do you have a number on paper? How many, how many of those um, that are eligible have taken it up so far? I don't, but I can assure you I'll have that for you tomorrow when we do our press conference. Are we doing a press conference tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, uh, tomorrow, sir, I'll provide that okay. information for you. Um, if I get it this evening, I will, but it'll certainly be added in my remarks tomorrow. Great. Thank you. And, um, just as a follow-up, do you have any idea whether it's less than you had expected? We are hearing some reports that it's only 50% take-up. I don't know if that's right or not. Um, is, there any, is there any indication you can give us on take-up? No, I will provide you with as much detail as I have with respect to uh, the take-up. Yeah. Um, I know that today we're full. We had a little bit of a late start this morning because of the press being here, but we'll catch up, so we're hoping people will be patient because their appointments may be a little bit delayed. Uh, but I'll provide you more details tomorrow during the press conference. Okay, appreciate it. And um, just on the, on the issue with registration, is the website up and running? Yes, now? yes. Were there, were there any problems with that? In Not to my knowledge. I logged on. It's a, it's a um, email address. Uh -huh. Let me just give it to you again. Okay. www, sorry, no, it's vaccine at gov .bm. So there's a website, and the website also has plenty of information concerning COVID, the guidance, et cetera, as well as information concerning the vaccine, factual information, FAQs, et cetera. So we'd invite members of the public if they really want to know the full details and the correct information concerning vaccines, that the information on the website is accurate and correct. And then if you want to register, you put in the subject line registration data, and the email address is vaccine at gov.bm. Thank you. One question for Dr. How do you, what are the benefits of taking this vaccine? Uh, one and two, how do you comfort or reassure those that are on the fence of either taking or not? They have some reservation. So the first question, um, I think what's really been stressed this whole pandemic is that maybe I might get COVID-19 and be okay. I might recover. 
but I might pass it on to someone else who might not. Mm -hmm. I have lost someone close to me. My auntie was actually one of the first people that passed. Um, she was in Panama. I think you guys have covered that story, um, my Uncle Sheridan. And so for me, it, it's very real. Um, obviously, they don't know how they got it, but they did. He was okay, but she wasn't. So I, that's my thinking, is that we, we can't think about ourselves. We have to think about those who are vulnerable, who may get it, and then may not recover. So that will be my, my, main, my main answer to that. Um, for the second, I'm here. <laughs> I'm a young woman. I have not had children yet. Um, I look to have children. Right? I look to have a very long life. And so for me to be here, I think, and also the Premier, the Opposition Leader, the Minister of Health, we are here as examples that we, are, we feel it's safe. And so hopefully that would be some type of um, reassurance. I don't know what else I could do uh, other than put myself, you know, right there with you. It's not about do as I say, but it's do as I do. Dr. Elvis, just a question about the uh, lingering effects. We've had reports that there are uh, in some cases, lingering effects for people, some people who don't even really get that sick from it, but do catch their disease. From COVID? Yes. yes. Yes, actually, I know a few people who have had it, and they do tell me that they still have these side effects. And so that's something also to think about, that you may get it, you may recover, but we don't know where you're going to be five, ten years down the line and what that's going to do to your physiology. So that's why getting the vaccine, I would highly recommend it. So the, the question I was asking is, is so has there been any, um, are there any ongoing studies to see whether people who do, um, you know, survive the disease end up with, because I'm told that it could affect your lungs, your, all, all your organs. Yes. That's for an extended period of time, and some people may have to deal with this for a very, very long time. Yes, I'm sure there are studies. Um, local, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm not sure about locally. Um, I know that the GPs, once the Ministry of Health is finished monitoring that, the GPs then monitor those people who have had COVID. Um, but I know that globally there are those types of studies and it's definitely been observed that it does seem to still linger on and, and give you more problems. Another reason to get vaccinated. Exactly. <laughs> any, any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Mayor? Um, you said there was a bit of a mistrust in the black community. Absolutely. And does that have to deal with legacy? Oh, I'm sure it has to do with legacy issues, um, and it, it's a start, but it's also uh, borne out in the public polling of what you see and the disparities between the communities in Bermuda um, of willingness to take the uh, vaccine. And uh, as we know, uh, these disease uh, globally um, and in uh, Bermuda uh, as well um, has had a disproportionately, I would say, negative impact on uh, persons of color. And that's, those are the facts. And so in order to protect ourselves and to protect our families, we have to be willing uh, to go ahead and get the protection which is there. I recognize, I understand the questions. I had a conversation with my mother last night in between her laughing at me for getting a vaccine in front of a camera because she knows how scared I am of needles, but about the seriousness of what this is about. And there is an incredible amount of misinformation that is out there. For whatever reason that information is there, I cannot speak to. But as Dr. Weldon has spoken to, as doctors have spoken to, as other persons have spoken to, this is something that can be trusted, and it is something that we are going to go ahead and lead from the front. And it is our hope, and the example as the Minister of Health has said, that if we do this, then others will recognize and understand that if we are doing it, then it is safe for them as well.